Hey guys, I'm Gio. Today I wanted to talk about some of Dark Funeral's history and give a retrospective look at their body of work. <laughs> Dark Funeral formed in 1993 in Stockholm, Sweden with founding members Michael Svanberg, aka Lord Armin, and David Parlin, better known as Black Moon. In 1994, they released their self-titled EP on the same day as their first show, which happened to be with Gorgoroth and Marduk. Quickly after that, they tracked eight songs for their first full-length release with Dan Swano, which they decided not to greenlight due to poor mixing. They ended up re-recording this album with Peter Tadgren at the Abyss Studios and added two songs while they were at it. In 1996, the album now known as The Secret of the Black Arts was finally put out. Shortly after they finished recording this album, Emperor Magus Caligula replaced their then-vocalist Themgoroth. <laughs> EQ Manthorn, their drummer, is also given the boot at this time and replaced by new guy Elasman. What's funny about this is after kicking out EQ Manthorn, they go and cover Bathory's Call from the Grave and EQ Manthorn, the song that the guy they just kicked out probably named himself after. In 1996, founding member Blackmoon left the band, saying conflict with Armin is the primary reason for his departure. Two years later, in 1998, they released their second full-length, Vobiscum Satanus, followed by their Teach Children to Worship EP in 2000, which was basically a precursor to the third album, Diabolus Interium, released in 2001. It got to number 45 on the Swedish albums chart, and generally it was a very successful album for them. In 2003, Dark Funeral's current guitarist Shaq Moll replaced then-guitarist Dominion and made his official debut with the band at Wacken. Following this show, they toured South America and after going through their recorded material, they released live album De Profundis Clav uh, Ad the following year. Around this time, the band officially announced their departure from record label No Fashion Records, who had put out their releases up until this point, from which the band was not receiving royalties from. Armin and Caligula sought the right to their back catalog in a series of legal battles that went on until 2008, when the Supreme Court of Sweden ruled in favor of Dark Funeral. In 2005, fourth full length, Atera Totis Sanctus, is released and hits the Swedish top 40 at number 35. While touring South America during Atera's album cycle, Caligula became ill and was unable to perform a show in Lima, Peru, leaving the band to have to perform without vocals and bass. Angry fans began to riot and vandalize properties near the venue, which led to the band's gear being confiscated by the Peruvian police afterwards. In 2007, Niels Fagelstrom <laughs> better known as Dominator, replaced Matt Moden as drummer. Within the same year, the band appeared in pornographic film Club Satan, The Witch's Sabbath, which I had just happened to skim through for research purposes just to find out they appear in the credits of the film during this clip. Now a bitch of Satan into the Witch's Sabbath, bitch! They also contributed their song, King Antichrist, and during the part of the film where the song appears, they speed up the footage to the tempo of the song, which is just blazing fast, and in the beginning of the song, it's just a bunch of under the ball shots with dude butthole, and I was fucking, I was dying at the thought of these guys giving their song to the movie and getting the scene with all the dude ass. The final notable thing about the Atera era is that they released a two-part live series DVD called Atera. Orbis Terrarium Part 1 and 2. In 2009, Angelus X0 Pro Eternus is released with controversial music video for song My Funeral being the first single for the album. Shortly after posting via MySpace, it was pulled from the platform due to it dealing with <coughs> and kind of it being twisted into the narrative of them promoting Super, <coughs> which is whatever. The video was shot in an abandoned mental hospital, and at least for me, it was my first introduction to Dark Funeral. Around the end of 2010, the band found themselves consisting only of Lord Armin and Shackle. 
only gay guy who had been in the band for 15 years at this point was going to get married and wanted to settle down. Bassist B-Force left of his own volition and Dominator quit for a short time as well. In this period between 2011 and the current Dark Funeral we know now, Notch Garm from Negator did vocals for a bit and Zornahim played bass until 2014. Speaking of 2014, we start breaking into modern Dark Funeral with release of the video Nailed Them to the Cross, revealing new vocalist Helja Martyr. <laughs> Hell yeah, Major. I'm really fucking all these names. I'm really sorry. In 2016, where Shadows Forever Rain won P3 Gold, the biggest award in Sweden for best rock and metal album. Rock Metal 26 on I Dark Funeral! <laughs> Sadly, Dominator left the band in 2017 and was replaced by current drummer Jaloma. Dominator, I believe, drums for Norgevel now, which is a band you should totally check out if you're into Dark Funeral, by the way. As of the making of this video, Dark Funeral has announced that they are prepping up for the studio to record a new album. If it's anywhere near as sick as the last one, it will definitely be hella tight. The coolest thing I found while doing my research for this video was an interview of Lord Armin being asked for his thoughts on American Hipster Black metal and instead of shitting on it like I totally expected him to he talks about artistic freedom and expression instead of being some bit and I have infinitely more respect for Lord Armin now than I did ever before I've found that most metal musicians are a lot less meatheadish than the people who are just fans and this is just a great showing of that there's been a rise in black metal here in America over the past few years and not just from the evil you know uh, pure black metal stance but now what we call the hipster black metal, you know, like the Americanized black metal. What's your take on black metal going soft? New genera generation have their take on every music genre there is, you know. There's always new input, new way of expressions and stuff. But uh, I mean, I'm old school in that sense. I do my thing. Let the new generation do their thing and who am I to judge them for that? I'm not going to spend much energy to to criticize them. And music is, you know, it's, you know, self-expression, you know. Everybody have their own, uh, you know, what, what they want to express with their music and the way they want to express this, you know, it's, it's artistic freedom. So, yeah. yeah, everybody's free to do whatever they want, but of yeah. course there's, there's different takes on, on when it comes to different generations. If you got this far, thank you so much for watching. I should say I apologize so much for butchering every fucking name here. And by no way was this a definitive, comprehensive history of Dark Funeral. It was just for entertainment. And if I got any of this wrong or missed something important, it was not my intention. I only highlighted events that I thought were relevant. It was purely out of love for the band that I wanted to make this. It would help me out a ton if you would leave me a like, comment, and subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching, and see you guys.